Good morning, everybody. Delicious morning, Joe. Good morning, and welcome to the morning routine. This is our first, our fiftieth broadcast together. What an exciting morning! So thanks for being here. Where we get to uh, cover our news headlines, passage of wisdom, and a prayer, and some stories to start our day together. And uh, so glad that you guys could be here again. I was listening uh, yesterday to my own podcast just to you know listen and critique it a little bit. And it's funny because for all the podcast listeners, I start off with uh, sipping my coffee. So the very first sound for podcast listeners is this. <sighs> On every single episode. And I was like, that is so weird. Like people who have never seen the Facebook Live who just listen to that must wonder what on earth is that guy doing, you know? Morning, Sean. Glad you could be here this morning. So, uh, but anyways, I hope everybody's doing great. I got a new shirt. Look at this. Huh? My wife picked this up for me yesterday. I'm excited. I am so happy that I could make some store, you know, happy because just think about it. They buy this shirt hoping that somebody named Freedom walks in and buys it. And there's not many Freedoms out there. So I made some stores day by getting this out of their inventory yesterday. It's such a rare name, you know? Morning, Chad. Good to see you, buddy. You know, so I picked this up yesterday. Now I got my own shirt. Feeling good. Had a great yesterday. It was uh, at my father's uh, birthday, which is why we're out of town, because it's my father's birthday week. And uh, it was really cool. There was a moment he was sitting on the couch with a friend of his, and we were all talking. And, and I said, you know, how long have you guys known each other? And they looked at each other and they started talking. And it was like 17 years old. Good morning, Julie and Steve. 17 years old they've known each other. And they're, he turned 65 yesterday. And they're sitting on the couch. They hang out, spend time with each other every year. Um, and, uh, and their wives have known each other since they were like 13 or 14 years old. And I was like, how rare is that? That when you're... You know, look at your friends and people that you know and how know you, how long you've known them. And can you picture yourself at 65 sitting on a couch, eating birthday cake, reminiscing and spending time together? Like that's, what a great friendship that is, right? It's pretty amazing. So, but while I was talking to his buddy, his friend's name is Roy and I was talking to him. We were just sharing stories and stuff and we were talking about flights and he, I got reminded of a story that... There was, I had to go on a business trip one time, so I packed enough clothes, uh, exactly enough clothes. And it was like khaki pants and dress shirts. And I had to fly out to Chicago. Good morning, Paul. And um, I had to pick up a uh, friend of mine, a guy that we do business with, and then travel out to another part of the country. So I get on the plane, and I'm flying, right? Do -do -do, you make a small talk. The lady comes by, asks if we want a drink. I ask for a cup of coffee. She brings me a cup of coffee, put on my little table gentleman next to me gets a beverage. We're in a small talk. So if I say to the guy, I say, hey, you know, what do you do for a living? Typical question. What do you do for a living? He says, oh, I'm a pulmonologist. I said, wow. I'm like, you know, the heart is such an amazing thing. I've always wanted, like, been fascinated by how it works and just, it's, it's just um, amazing. He's like, yeah, it's pretty amazing. He says, that's a cardiologist. I do lungs. I'm like, oh, well, that's pretty amazing too. <laughs> and I felt like such a dummy. And right when I'm feeling at a dummy because I don't know my pulmonology and uh, cardiology, I reach over to grab my coffee, and what do I do? I hit the cup of coffee and dump it on my khaki, light khaki pants, drenching it in brown, brown liquid where it soaks all the way around to the backside. Good morning, Kevin. And, uh, and this guy must have been sitting there going, this guy's a real moron. He doesn't know anything, so... Craziest thing. Anyways, when that plane landed, I ended up getting off wrapping a sweatshirt around my back because it had gone to the back of my khakis, and that didn't look so good. You know, brown coffee. Went to the bathroom, took them off, threw them right in the garbage can, put on another pair of pants. But anyways, one of those crazy stories. So, but, so I got things to share with you here real quick here this morning. A bunch of little things that I thought were pretty interesting. So, and I like to save these things up to share with you. Good morning, Tom. Tom, you're just in time. You're going to love this. So, you probably saw on the news recently that NBA players were getting uh, potatoes were showing up in their mailboxes. And they're like, what is going on? All these potatoes are showing up. Well, you know me as a produce guy. That intrigued me, so I had to research it. So, I look into it, and there is a company out there right now that you can go online to called, hang on, potatoparcel.com. And for $9.99, you could put a message on a potato and they will ship that potato to anybody that you want to ship it to. 
for $14.99, they'll actually put their picture, the person's face, right on the potato and send it out. It's absolutely amazing. Or you can get a postcard potato for $13. Uh, they got all kinds of crazy stuff. So I thought that was fascinating, right? What a unique business idea. They were actually on Shark Tank, uh, these guys, a while ago. So pretty fascinating, but thought I'd share that with you. Next thing I want to share with you is an update on eBay. I used to use eBay all the time. And I started running into bad, uh, just things that didn't go smoothly, right? So I switched over to Amazon. Well, eBay is now making a big push on revamping the way that they work, and I might have to try them out again. One of the things that they are doing now is they're offering third day shipping on over 20,000 items out of eBay. That's a big deal. Was it 20,000 or 20 million? Hang on, I could have read you the wrong number. Uh, where is it? Well, anyways, nonetheless, it doesn't matter. I don't have the number in front of me, but they're offering 30 day shipping on a lot of items. Let's say that, okay? And also they're revamping their recommendation uh, platform. So uh, for some people that's really boring, I understand, but for people who like to find a good deal, that's important because now we can find the stuff that we're looking for. So I might have to go back and give eBay a try. It's pretty fascinating. So next, for those people who use Google Maps and go to malls or concerts and can never find their car, Google Maps just unveiled a new feature that if you open up your Google Maps, there's a blue P for park button. And while you're standing next to your car, you hit the button and it marks your car so you know where your car has been parked and you can find it again. Is that awesome or what? Right? It's the next best thing after uh, uh, breadcrumb, you know, dropping breadcrumbs along the way so you can find your way back. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I want to share that. One more thing before we get to our normal starting days. This one, fascinating. China. This is amazing to me, guys. There's things that we take for granted here, right? Hang on, I need a cup of coffee before I share the story with you. Mm. Very good. China has a huge problem with toilet paper theft. I'm not making it up, guys. It's toilet paper theft, okay? So they have such an issue there that most public bathrooms don't even supply toilet paper because people who go in there just grab it and steal it and go away with it, right? So here's a, here's a little blurb. They're, they're coming out with new stuff to combat this problem. In the Temple of Heaven Park in Beijing, authorities have been forced to fight back against toilet paper stealers. They have installed a $720 facial recognition machine. Now listen to this. Before getting down to business, visitors will now stare at a wall-mounted machine that registers their face, records it into their system, and then dispenses exactly two feet of toilet paper, no more. How about that one? So one, every time you go to the bathroom, you gotta stare at a machine and register your face, and two, you get two feet of toilet paper. Now, I haven't measured what the normal usage is in the bathroom of toilet paper, but I'm curious, is two feet enough or is it way too much? I have no idea. But it's still fascinating that you have to go through all that just to get that, right? Man. That's pretty, I thought that was pretty big, so I had to share that with you. So, Steve, I don't know why you're hating on my coffee mug here. This is a beach mug, all right? I don't know where they got them. I didn't pick them, but it fits a lot of coffee, and I got to tell you that, that is a plus. Mm. So, very good. All right, guys, let's see what is happening now on uh, our uh, trended searches. <clears throat> We've been doing that lately. Everybody seems to appreciate it. So, let's see the top 10 most Google terms yesterday, Wednesday, March 22nd. Number one, London. There was a London attack out there, um, and so the number one searched word was London of all yesterday. Number two was Devin Nunes. Uh, Devin Nunes had chair of the House Intelligence Committee, and there's a big story on him. Number three, Chuck Barris. He is the producer and personality of The Gong Show, has passed away at 87. The third most searched term, Chuck Barris. I had never even heard of that name before. Number four was BBC, uh, the Daredevil's Feeding a Dangerous Russian Craze, an uh, article on BBC. Number five, Death Note, and Netflix Death Note, a case of whitewashing. That was from BuzzFeed News. Uh, number six was Demi Lovato. Uh, number seven was Empire. Back at Empire, Xavier's trying to freeze. Oh, it's a show. Number eight, Warped Tour, concert tour. Number nine is Paul 
Manafort, long we're gonna, I don't even know what I don't know that why these people are ranking so high. This is uh, what's going on. Number ten is breaking news. So there's your top ten most searched keywords, and I didn't search any of those words yesterday. Did you? I I, I searched potato in the mail. I, I said that didn't rank though. Not enough people searched that. I guess. Go figure. You know. So, all right. Uh, well, that was our trending keyword our keywords from Google Search. Let's go and check out what our trending news is this morning, guys. Okay, moving right along. Six fifty eight a.m. Just for a little update for you. All right. First uh, story on trending news: Parliament of the United Kingdom. Uh, British police arrest seven following deadly attack near Parliament. That was from the Huffington Post. Next, Bur uh, next story is Birmingham, England. London attack. UK police arrest seven in massive pre-dawn raids. That's from Fox News. Uh, the third Senate Russian investigators put focus on Manafort. After that, Manhattan, New York. White man who wanted to harm blacks arrested in New York stabbing police. That's from uh, Reuters.com. Uh, after that, USA versus Port, uh, Puerto Rico in baseball classic title. After that was Death Note, which is a Netflix show. After that was the Eiffel Tower, because the Eiffel Tower goes dark in solidarity with London. That's from the Huff Huffington Post. Uh, after that, Facebook Live uh, article. After that was Beth Fukumoto. Yeah, Fukumoto, Hawaiian Republican uh, representative, has uh, resigned. NBC News. And last was AT&T. AT&T and Verizon suspend YouTube ads over hate speech videos. Which is interesting because I also saw yesterday that a lot of companies uh, were unhappy with Google and Facebook because their ads were showing up next to content that they did not want to be associated with. And so Google and Facebook are now making a new algorithm and telling the companies that they will work with them to try to figure that out. Because right now they buy ad space and they just throw it up wherever they think it would fit with that particular viewer. So anyway, so be revamping there. There is your trending news for the day, guys. I got to tell you, honestly, nothing exciting there. I was a lot more excited about the toilet paper in China problem. Honestly, I don't know why that's not trending. That was more important to me. That story, by the way, came to us from The Hustle, one of my favorite newsletters I tell you guys about all the time. So, well, let's check over and see what our passage of wisdom is this morning. All right, here we go. Our passage of wisdom today is uh, one verse, another simple verse. I love it. All right. Uh, today we are going to be reading Proverbs 11, verse 25. Proverbs 11, verse 25. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. I mean, what, what do I say? It just said it right there, right? I mean... All right, so let's embellish on it a little bit, I guess, because we, we need to, right? A generous person will prosper. Right? Yes. Okay. Uh, whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Uh, pretty much so, yeah, right? So for people who, who you know, heard that this is a Bible verse and they're like, well, that's, what's the, where's the wisdom in this and uh, if I don't believe in God? Well, this is pretty obvious, guys. A generous person will prosper. That's all play. Right? Doesn't matter if you believe in God. Doesn't matter if you follow God. Doesn't matter if you want to be Christ-like. Doesn't matter any of that stuff. If you are generous to other people, you will prosper. There is no doubt about it. That's just how it is. It shows that you have an open heart to serving other people and and uh, and caring for others, and that uh, what you will prosper with. And the next part: whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. People have said this for a long time ago. I repeat the same saying that in troubled times, find somebody to serve. And I, from life experience, I say it. And it's true. When you are having your hardest moments, you get out there and you serve other people and you think you're there to make their life better. And I swear and at the end of the day, it's almost like they were there to make your life better because by you serving them, you are refreshed. There's no doubt about it. So a generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed, right? Love, uh, love one another and take care of each other. And this is, uh, this is just a verse that, uh, that uh, shows that some even more. So very good guys. 7.03 AM time for us to wrap this thing up, which is a shame because I have so much stuff I'd love to share with you guys. This could be an hour long morning show, but 
we do need to keep it within reason, don't we? So let's pray and let's get this day started, okay guys? Father, we thank you. We thank you for this Thursday. We thank you for bringing the sun up this morning as it creeps over the horizon uh, on cue and uh, as designed by you so long ago for our benefit. And we thank you for that. It's, it's truly amazing. Thank you for your reminder today that if we're having a down day, a down week, a down year, that to put our focus on other people and serve others, and that can change our year around and that day around very, very quickly, that by serving other people, we get refreshed. And you've designed it that way. And for us to live any other way, to live selfishly or hoarding or just to, to conserve all of our time just for ourselves and things like that is not real living and we will live, uh, our life will seem to be much harder than it needs to be. So thank you for that reminder. I thank you for, uh, uh, for the, our friends and community and, and the friends uh, like my father, uh, who they've been friends for so long. And uh, I ask you to protect those relationships that we all have, those friendships. Put a, put a, uh, a uh, force field of per se around us and that when there's uh, confusion or misunderstanding that you help us navigate that to preserve those lifelong friendships that mean so much to all of us. Um, and we thank you for that. Father, be with the people around the world today who are having uh, great hardships. Be out in the, in the UK as they're trying to sort that out and there's a lot of confusion and pain and suffering right now. Um, guard their hearts and bring them some sort of comfort and comforting that they uh, don't even understand, but yet it comes over them. We thank you for your, uh, your grace and your love, and we love you. Amen. All right, guys. Well, that's a wrap. Thanks for being here today on Thursday. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning, as always. So go out there today. Have a great day. Serve other people. And remember, be who you were meant to be. Have a great day, guys.